right. We have 5.30 on one o'clock in here, so we're going to go with that. Um, so first we're going to, it's a little confusing on the agenda, but um, first up is actually the liquor board, not the select board. So we're going to call the liquor board to order. And it's, for, first item is public comment, but this is only anything for the liquor board, not the select board that's not on the agenda. Seeing none, we'll do approval of the agenda. So moved. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Um, under uh, business, we have um, one liquor license for Sodexo. Motion to approve. Careful. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> and a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Call the select board to order. First up is public comment. This is anything not on the agenda for the select board. Yeah. Just state your name for the record. Sure, I'm Amy Grassmick. I'm a resident of Randolph and a director of Kindle Public Library here in the village. I want to um, brief the select board about what's going on with the repairs to the library's dome, which has been leaking into the attic since at least 2015. Um, uh, there are a few things you should know. First of all, I published an RFP in September um, to hire A&E services to develop the detailed scope of work for the restoration of the cupola. This is required by the National Park Service. They have to approve the scope of work um, before we can move forward with the project. So just as a reminder, the National Park Service um, is responsible for two of the four grants that is going to help pay for the work on this project. The mandatory site visit is next Thursday. Proposals are due November 19th. So I'm really psyched about this because I feel like I'm getting some momentum now and getting this project moving forward. Um, my ambition is to get the plans finalized and approved by the National Park Service so that we can work on the next step, which is actually to hire a contractor to do the restoration work. This feels really time sensitive because I have two deadlines I'm staring down. One is um, the Preservation Trust Grant that needs to be spent by December of 2026. The National Park Service Grant has to be spent by December of 2027. And that feels really short right now. So, um, next steps that need to happen. Um, the Vermont Housing and Conservation Board Historic Preservation Easement. This needs to be addressed so that we can, in fact, be awarded the $150,000 that they have pledged to the project. And I'm wondering if the select board can tell me what the status is with that. I know there were concerns with language that was in the easement and my understanding from Elizabeth Egan, the council for, H for BHCB, when she visited here was there was going to be negotiation, conversation, something. I believe that's still going. Yeah, I have a call back. She called yesterday. We sent over to Mick Campbell a list of some sample ideas. What I was looking for was it's fairly extensive. We went through and tried to rewrite every section that had the pieces that had the concerns that you've highlighted. It's pretty lengthy for both the library one and the Chandler one, even though they're separate grants, parallel tracks kind of thing. So we sent over some samples with the idea being how much room for wiggle is there. And we got back, just send us a list. So, so she reached out. But so that was that, and it's on us to produce the list at this point. So. Now, not to belabor the point, but the clock is ticking. <laughs> so I'm, you know, continue to feel urgency about being able to move forward with making sure we actually are going to get awarded the money that needs to go into the project. So thanks for letting me know what's going on with that. Um, so as a reminder, so far we've raised six hundred thousand dollars toward the project. You may have heard that the Vermont Department of Libraries 
recently awarded almost $16 million for capital projects in libraries. This was ARPA money, is ARPA money. Um, they awarded half of the projects for more than a million dollars or more. And unfortunately, Kimball Library was not among the awardees. Mm. So the $400,000 grant that I was hoping would finalize the kind of fundraising that needed to happen is disappointed. So what am I doing now? Um, I have been in touch with Emily Pello Corbett at the Vermont Community Foundation. She made a visit to the library in September and invited me to send her kind of a pricey of the capital needs at the library. Um, she's in charge of working with the donor advised funds. So fingers crossed we're gonna find um, a benefactor, um, but I'm not counting on that. Um, the library trustees meet next Thursday, and I'm sure this will be a topic of discussion. At that board meeting, um, I understand that you all will be discussing ARPA funding that the municipality has access to uh, tonight, so I'm going to stay for that part of the conversation. Um, I do uh, want to respond to a concern, Trini, that you had, I think, at the September board meeting that the so library. Mean, this is turning into an agenda item. Um, I'm moving on from is, ARPA. Well, I'm public on from comment ARPA. is only for a couple minutes to give sure. a topic and the board to decide if they want to add it at a future meeting. Great. So, so just we need as a to point, move through the agenda. Sure. Just as a point, in the past. 15 years, the library has um, invested about $375,000 in capital projects. And of that money, about $60,000 came from the town of Randolph. The rest of it was fundraising and funds that the library trustees have access to. So I don't want the impression to be that the library is a big money suck for the town of Randolph. We have been very um, successful at raising funds and finding ways to keep the building in good repair for the community's use. So there you go. Thank you. Is there any other public comment? Um, yeah. I'm not sure if we are on the agenda or how this process works. We were told. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Um, approval of the agenda, Heidi? No, public. Um, Heidi, 12 Pearl Street. Um, I would like to see, probably in the future agenda, the recreation and reestablishment of the REC um, Advisory Committee. It is something that, as a former REC director here, um, it is a vital part of the Recreation Department. Um, it's a very important board. Uh, just to be able to keep the department accountable of things. As many of you heard, there's lots of different things happening and not really up to par, but I think that advisory committee is vital to this town. I've been in the rec world for 25 years and never worked in a municipality without it. Um, the advisory is not only your ears and your advocates for this town, but they can help. Um, they're a big source of, there are a lot of, there are resources, there are people that can help you. I know that when I was here, they're a very big part of what we were able to create and, and help create with the, you know, together we were able to create a lot more for the town, as you all, all know. And the fact that it was dissolved and not really valued as something important for this town just really made me really sad. Um, and now that we're, you know, constantly have a lot of issues in the last two years, there hasn't been a soundboard for the community to go to. So me being a former person in this town, I get bombarded a lot. Um, being a lot of the active coaches in town are getting bombarded. Um, so it's not really a place to go where we can be a soundboard and help the department as well as that those people can advocate and communicate with you guys as a select board. So I would hope that we are in favor of reestablishing a committee that is very important to this town um, and that you guys, you know, select those people and that we can bring that back so we can kind of bring back some order to our department that 
it's been pretty awesome in the past. Thank you. Thank you. Any other comment? Seeing none, we'll move to approval of the agenda. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Consent calendar, meeting minutes and warrants. I motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 school that worked with us last year for traffic control and crosswalks at the gazebo area. There's three crosswalks. And Scott, did that work? Yeah, I mean, uh, what we did last year was had two cruisers or two officers assigned to the event, uh, one in the intersection of uh, Main Street and Pleasant. The other one was at Prince and Pleasant with barricades and another volunteer to help people kind of get across and all the above. Um, that's what we had last year. Um, so whatever. Yeah, I'm that's gonna... similar to what we did last year is what we're going to do again. Have you talked to the fire department? The fire department. Yeah. I don't fire know. On the permit. I don't know. Yeah. If she's so done if you're that. closing the street, you're going to talk to the fire department too. If so she's done that before, I assume she's done. She's done it again. They haven't she... signed off, and we haven't got any input from them. Okay. So I know the last time we closed the street, it never went to them and they were a little bit upset. So okay. I would assume this permit will need their comments also. Yeah, I don't think they liked it last year. I it can was check with them tomorrow. A they, bit don't they, participate, they participate up on the hill and give out candy by the hospital, <coughs> correct? We I don't know where they participate and hand out candy, but my concern is you're closing the street. I'll check with them tomorrow. Yeah. Sure. There's no problem. That's then okay. can I get back to you at the office for the conclusion of this, or how do we we'll see how the board it? decides to go with the permit? Sometimes we approve them, but you have to coordinate with Trevor and Mike and Scott okay. and make sure there's a safe way to, to do, do it. Do you have any input there? I mean, so I think that you were looking at trying to do uh, amend the permit uh, because the way the permit reads right now is two separate locations, and what we talked about was a single location. Was a single, yeah. but was not in your permit, so we can make those amendments sure. and get that squared away with the input from the fire department as well, yeah. and have it one stop shop. That's fine. We can do that. Yep. Yeah. All right. Any questions on this one? Um, <coughs> Who's covering costs the Shipley's officer side? The Halloween, um, the, the chamber will probably do that, right? So the chamber still, Whatever we did in the previous year is what we will do this year. Well, the chamber still has an outstanding bill with the town, so that kind of complicates things. <laughs> <laughs> you may not like that kind of <laughs> He's good. I can see him. He's fine. Scott and I talked about that a couple weeks discount. ago, right. and we're going to complete the payment on that, on that outstanding bill. She's been out for almost 10 days. So. Well, the bill's um, from the 4th of July. So. Yes, I know that. Okay. He, is that correct? We talked about that, and I'm going to, that's going to get paid when she gets back into the office. Okay. So the amendment to the permit would be that you, because it is a little confusing, Andrea, um, so you would be amending the permit to um, just have Main Street and South Pleasant closed off. Just from Prince Street to Main Street on South Pleasant in front of the bike shop, right? <laughs> right, like right, like at the crosswalk. Yep. Not not even at the crosswalk yet. Right, really in front of the gear shop. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. Just that small section. Okay. 
and that leaves the space open for people to mingle. Yet, I think Valley Bowl may come up and set up near the corner of Prince and the bike shop, and Tire Warehouse wants to participate and come down and do a, a trunk or treat and hand out candy, so they're going to come down to that area too. And if, if for some reason the fire department doesn't approve this, then you'd find space for them like at the gazebo yard there? Or? I think so, yeah, there's room enough, yes. And we don't have to shut the street down, but it seems like a sensible that small spot section for that, that little corner that to small do that. Section have to shut Much down. safer if we did, yeah. Any questions on this side? I didn't want to take a stab at a motion on that. I'll take it. I'm going to take a stab at this. OK. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> see what how we do. All okay. right. Um, so I'm going to take a motion to approve the assembly permit from the Chamber of Commerce with the amendment that the street be shut down in front of the gear house. Is that good? You're good. Okay. Um, contingent upon the approval of our fire chief and receive uh, that we receive payment from past due. And police chief's approval. And police chief's approval as well. And we amend the permit to not include merchants. Right? And to amend the permit to not include Merchants Row. You did good. Thank you. All <laughs> <laughs> those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Next up, we have an assembly permit for Vermont advocates for individuals with limitations. Hi, yes. Um, so, does anybody have any questions about what we want to do? I'm sorry, if this was to stand No, you're fine. Okay. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's real simple. We're just going to do a little table with a bake sale and just like a meet and greet, and it should be pretty low key. So, this is a summit print just because it's town property that they're using? Yeah. Okay. We were going to set up in, like, on the grass area in front of the gazebo. Sort of falls in the space in between when we've had these, and it involves town property, much like the little um, parking space thing we had. We've had the assembly mm -hmm. permit be the kind of the approval formalization mm -hmm. mechanism. Okay. And do we need signatures with RPD or parking, parking or streets mm -hmm. or motion to approve as is? Okay. <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. 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 So I'm gonna try to be on this, like we're gonna just exit if that's a is that sure, yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Appointments to boards, committees, and commissions. How many spots do we have open on the PC right now? Yeah. Oh. Do we what have do we, what do we have for a balance? I don't know. Do we have, I know you, I hear, well, there's a body, but sometimes we get in trouble when we get to plug in a body and everybody thinks the yeah, same. Thank you so much. Well represented, yep, we're good. How I are think. we for thank you. Thank you. She's not village though, right? She was on a port of duty. I'm not sure either, but what about like, do we have somebody from the business community and somebody from the agriculture community and somebody from, are we, one of our most productive so planning commissions is she really worked on yeah, that. Sure would be business, right? She's a bank. Um, Matt Morask would also be business, running his engineering firm in town. Um, but he's natural resources too, right? He works on rivers and. He works on, yes. That kind of stuff. So. And, uh, from, Andrew has his own small tea company up in Randolph Center. He works out of his home. Um, Josh Hanford, he has his community. Housing. Good housing background. Yeah. Yeah, he's been on the board just a very short time in Missouri. Shown his worth. 
<laughs> um, um, do we have anybody from the ag community? Um, and a few people in the past that are covered who else covered on them. there. No, there was currently no agricultural person from that. There was an agricultural background. Let's see, any of the candidates either. So, um, has the members of the Planning Commission talked about these two candidates? No, we have not talked about them. We don't, you know, we don't one of the candidates has worked in the agency. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Years in marketing. <laughs> I'm sorry. I just missed that. What did you say? One of them was a marketing person with the agency of ag. But I think that's different. Than yeah. There's a need out there that keeps coming up of people to preserve some of these open fields for ag use. And uh, just wondering if that's on kind of represented too. Yeah. I mean, that's certainly something that is important to me. So we definitely would have voices on the, on the commission that would. Do you have a, one of either of the applicants that you thought was would fit? Kind of a void that's on the committee now. Um, yes, and of, of the two, um, one of the applicants, uh, Caroline, um, seems like Hi. she would be a really good fit. Is you here, Caroline? Yes. Hi. Oh, nice to meet you. Just <laughs> hearing your conversation, um, I don't think I mentioned it in my letter of interest, but I have a master's from GLS in food and agriculture law and policy, and a background in market farming and all that kind of stuff, wow. and working in dairy. So Look at that. Might, <laughs> might fit with the there you go. That's what we want. But, you. Well, that's the one you liked, so. Well, I mean, they, they both, both, both people who submitted interest letters seemed like they would be good fits. Yeah. Um, but um, Caroline seemed like a particularly good fit, given the structure of the board right now. And the fact that our other candidate um, is already serving as a volunteer on on other on other committees, and so it seems like this is a, a nice way to get the new person. Another on, one is on, on, on. and a younger one. Yeah, and, uh, and the other one. And, and right <laughs> yeah, now, the, well, you need that balance, though, yeah. right? Like yeah. you need to. Their yes. interests, lots of time, are yes. different than yes. 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 some of those old antiquated ones. It's very <laughs> vintage. Um, You're vintage, yes. right? So, yes, yeah, so lots of lots of really great reasons. Yes, for your people. <laughs> um, do we have like um, an alternate seat or anything like that? Is do we need any of those or anything like that? Okay. It's not the anybody have any questions or any preferences or motions? I'm going to make a motion here. I'll, I'll move that we appoint Caroline to the committee. That's a tough one. I'm going to second that. They're both you know, great. They're both it's great. It's really tough to hear what's being said. Is there a microphone? No. Where people can speak? Is there a, a microphone in this room? No. No, no just from your diaphragm. Right. We, can we can certainly try to speak up. Okay. Is that better? It's a you like Thanks a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, thank you for that input. So we have a motion for Caroline. Is that a second? A second, yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Is that, that's all of our committee ones tonight, right? They're just the ones for the planning commission, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, there's a resolution to change authorized signers on the credit card. This feels like in every three months rite of passage at this point. <laughs> but this but will put four new signers on the primary card, um, which helps when we have an issue. The card got flagged and we bought some padlocks for some of our water supply sites to secure them. <coughs> so this will let us resurrect said card and we're looking to provide some layer of redundancy resiliency by adding a second card from a separate institution with more local support that then we can 
sequester should we find ourselves in this spot or need a second one? We've been talking about a second one on and off for as long as I've been here, and it predates me as I understand it. So, but this would allow us to have the record reflect who's an authorized signer currently. So it would be Tammy and her assistant, and then Kayla and I would be on there, but functionally, I'm largely out of that loop. In terms of <coughs> Motion to adopt resolution presented. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 That's done. We're not going to jump up item H up in the agenda. Um, the introduction of Green Peak Solar Array on the East Bethel Road. Thank you for jumping up. Appreciate it. I have. I emailed a, a quick presentation. I also have some hard copies. Mm -hmm. It can sometimes be easier. Yeah, we don't like to do things the easy way. <laughs> I don't know if you guys got the digital version, if you want to use it or not. But um, So, hello everybody, my name is Nathaniel Vandal. Um, I'm one of the owners of Green Peak Solar, um, and we are... Just so folks know, this is just a presentation tonight. We don't have to, there's no action on this. Um, yeah, so we're... Uh, uh, we're developing a solar project on uh, off of East Bethel Road on Steve and Cindy Richardson's land. Um, and we came to the Planning Commission back in 2022, um, kind of when we first uh, signed the lease with them and started to work on the project. And then um, earlier this year, we were awarded a power purchase agreement as part of a state-run request for proposals for to purchase renewable energy from projects like this. And so um, once we were awarded that uh, project, we kind of started things in earnest. We came back to the Planning Commission um, and did a very similar presentation to the Planning Commission um, to just solicit any feedback you guys might have about the project um, and, uh, and see if there are any questions. Um, so since meeting with the Planning Commission, we've, we've done a, a lot of things. Um, you know, we've, we've met with um, several of the neighbors of the project. Um, we've really tried to tailor the design to accommodate people's concerns. Um, so we, we shifted the array a little bit, um, which, which helped to um, alleviate some of the concerns of one of the neighbors to the south. And we've um, come up with an interconnection design um, that works well with the neighbor across the road from the Richardsons. Um, so we also recently sent out a 45-day notice which is kind of the advance notice that we'll be filing a petition for a certificate of public good um, at the PUC. Um, so you guys received that, and as sort of part of the follow-up, I offered to come and just answer any questions and give you guys a short presentation. Um, so this is not uh, this is not a net metering project, so we don't need any kind of like letter from the town saying this is a preferred location. This program is outside of outside of net meter, and we would be selling power at a wholesale rate um, of uh, just under eighty-five dollars a megawatt hour. So these these projects are are some of the lowest cost renewables that the state can purchase um, currently. Um, we also, you know, when we first uh, first met with the planning commission, we first sort of cited the project. We um, we spent a lot of time going through making sure we understood the town plan and made sure that the project fit within the requirements of the town plan. So, um, you know, we're avoiding, uh, we're avoiding slopes over 25%, floodways, wetlands, and streams. Um, we've cited the project so that the project area um, consists of less than 10 acres of prime agricultural soils, which is another requirement in the town plan. Um, and then I think sort of most importantly, we've cited the project um, in a location where we can use existing trees and topography to really help to make it um, screened as much as possible. Um, so there are a couple of photos um, that just to give you kind of a sense of, of where the project is that are in the presentation. Um, so it's, the, the project is, I think it's like over 500 feet, I believe, from the, from the road. And there's a pretty steep hill. Um, you can't really see it from East Bethel Road at that location. There are a few vantage points to the north where you can see it, and from Skeeto Road, but those are at a really great distance. And there's a, a pretty, um, pretty substantial row of trees. 
And one of the things we did in the design of the project was try to really utilize that, that existing row of trees to help kind of screen the project as much as possible. And so at this point, we're not proposing um, any additional screening because we think that we've been able to use what's there to tuck it in. Um, but if, if um, during the process of the filing, if there are concerns and you guys want to have a discussion about screening or if you guys want to visit the site, um, you know, happy to, happy to, um, to facilitate that at, at any time. Um, so I'm trying to just keep it quick for you guys because I know you have a long agenda and a lot of things to do. Um, but you know, there's a, a slide here with, with sort of the, the, the layout um, that we're considering now. And you can see some of these, um, you know, in this area, it's where we've kind of tried to use it, tried to remove the array from the area would be visible in this gap and tuck it behind the trees. And then this is the house I was mentioning to the south. We've, we've adjusted the array to make sure that it's, it's slid as far north away from them to keep it out of their view shed. Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to take up too much time here um, because this is mostly informational and so I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions you guys might have and um, certainly willing to come back at any time as well. So this is a lot smaller than the original one yes. proposed and it's going to connect to the power to line the distribution right there, line. not correct. have to go all the way down. That's that correct. correct, yep. Yeah, so there was a much larger 20 megawatt project that was proposed on this property and several other abutting properties. And that was gonna connect to the substation. Um, this, as you mentioned, will connect directly to the, to the distribution system that's already there. And the project is about a 10th of the size. Um, and we've really tried to consolidate the footprint as much as possible to kind of keep it in this area where it's got the least amount of visibility. Really no action from us unless we have things that we'd like to see them do. I would assume the planning commissioner gave you feedback. I, 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 wasn't, I was actually unable to attend that meeting. So. Um, yeah, I mean, we haven't had a um, a ton of feedback um, other than I would say it's sort of a, a generally positive reaction towards the project. Um, we ha we haven't. You know, I think it's um, as we progress through this process and the plans get more detailed and the studies get more detailed, um, then that can help to facilitate more specific discussions. Um, so if, you know, as you guys will be, you've received the 45 day notice, we don't anticipate any changes to the design from what we're showing in the 45 day notice, but there'll be a lot more information and a lot more stuff in the, in the petition for the Certificate of Public Good. And if you have questions or concerns, I'm happy to come back and talk that through with you guys and, and understand what we can do to, uh, to improve the project. Um, and like I said, I'm happy to host a site visit. We, we will host um, a site visit for um, abutting property owners and anybody that wants to come. Uh, Sometimes that's done as part of the PUC process. We tend to do one outside of the PUC process as well, just because that's the best way for people to see the site. So we'll let the town um, manager know when that's happening, if anybody wants to come, and if you guys want to have a select board site visit or if the planning commission wants to go, um, we're more than happy to do that. Um, Jeff Grout did, he was on the planning commission in 2022 when we first presented it and he and another planning commission member at that time did come up and see the site in person. So there is some institutional knowledge within the town of, you know, boots on the ground at the project. I looked at it when I was the much bigger project. That was quite a day's hike because we hiked all the spots. And oh, okay. Yeah. Where the line was going to connect. And so yeah. Yeah. Then you. Many times <laughs> <laughs> no area. Was there anybody here for this item? I just want to ask one question. How 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 big how, how much acres is it that you place in this on? So the um, the total project area within the fence I think is twelve acres and the array footprint on primatic soils is I think nine and a half. Um, 
and this would the power would be sold along with the renewable energy, like the attributes, to basically all of the Vermont State utilities. And so GMP being based basically 80 percent receive would receive 80 percent of that, and it would be distributed to all the small municipal utilities as well. But all of the energy and renewable energy credits go directly to Vermont utilities. And as I mentioned, these are some of the um, lowest cost uh, solar projects that, that, that um, the Vermont utilities have access to purchase from. <clears throat> but I do know why I wasn't at that meeting. I wasn't on the planning commission yet. <laughs> All right, let's go this time. <laughs> Great, thank you. Do you guys have any, like, would you like me to come back or how should I stay in touch with the town? Trevor. Okay. Jeff. Perfect. Those two can handle it. Great. Great. Thank you guys for your time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm scoot while I, while I can. All right. Um, EV grant, <laughs> we have two grants, sub for acceptance, an EV grant and a COPS grant. The payroll, or the e sorry, I was making a note reading the word payroll and then talking about something else. So the EV grant is not really a grant to us in the traditional sense. What this is is a state grant that can be awarded to um, one of the installers for, in this case, a level three charger that the primary site for would be here in the municipal parking lot. So the state uses its ARPA funds. That's how they're able to have a program. They like to be within a certain distance from the interstate, but this lets them kind of push it down into the village area. Um, and really all we have to do is sign an MOU. The way that this is set up is that this is a no maintenance. We're basically providing the site in terms of where the um, charging apparatus goes and the parking sites associated with it. Uh, snow clearance, all of those things will be in that MOU and be the responsibility of the, of the vendor, essentially. So that would give us a level three charger, say here in this lot, and then Green Mountain Power at the same time and in a separate um, activity is looking to put level two chargers over at the top of the Pleasant Street, Prince Street, out there as well, so we might be able to add some charging infrastructure here in town. Probably not at the same time. It sounded like the GMP, just based on their workflow, is we might see this one before we see the level two, but that gives at least some additional infrastructure. In there. So really, all this is asking is it's not grant approval in the traditional sense, but you'd be authorizing us to work out the MOU with them to to put it here. Sounds great. So you need a motion to, do you need a motion for this? I'll put it to yeah. work out the details. So moved. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> you got a second for Molly? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And the COPS grant. So this is the one that was in the police district budget um, for this year. We tried for it in year one um, and weren't successful. This time we were. So this will provide us with the, it's close to, what, 275, 300, I think is what the total award will be for essentially three years. I mean, they've actually not quite that much um, to fund for the hiring and retention of a cop. And what we've proposed to do both in this year's police budget and in sort of looking out at future years was to kind of front load a little bit, use a little bit more of it to blunt the impact and then kind of walk it down until we've got full assumption of those costs. So we just found out uh, we received the grant, so we're seeking acceptance, and we've got to go through all the process to search the grant agreements. But this is one that we essentially asked you, by extension, the voters for permission to apply for back in March. Yeah. So what's the um, what's the timeline we have to to spend it? Like, how would it three three years from when? Uh, Three years, presumably, from when the grant agreement's finalized. So we'll start. We've got the ads up for a cop now. We've had them up for a while. But um, to the extent we can marry those two process elements together, that'll be helpful. So if we, uh, if it takes a while to hire an officer, we still can use the money? Yep. OK. And we'll want to clarify if there's any way we can adjust it to match hiring time, You know, presuming that hiring time isn't 18 right. months out. Sure. But, right. Um, or something like yep. that. Yeah. Cool. And it's uh, admin and operating costs? You know, I mean, is it? Is it just salary or does it like, yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's for the officer. So we'll use it to, it's basically payroll expenses. So it'll be everything from salary to 
fringe benefits to those types of things. But no equipment. Yeah. And we put money in the budget for equipment for sure. that officer yeah. slot. Yeah. That makes sense. All right, so we need a motion to approve acceptance. I motion to approve acceptance of the COPS grant. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Orange County Parent Child Center. Erica's on the Zoom, so she's here with you. She's just digital. This is uh, kind of an opportunity to update Randolph with where this project is right now. Um, just as a refresher for those of you who don't know, can you hear me? I see Trevor. I'm trying to turn you up. All right, let's give that a shot. Okay, does that sound a little bit better? No. Let me turn my microphone How's that? Is that any better? <laughs> Is it too loud? <laughs> okay. Um, so this is uh, an update on the Orange County Parent Child Center Randolph Child Care Project for a refresher because it's been years in the making. Uh, this is a partnership between Orange County Parent Child Center, which currently operates in Tunbridge, and Green Mountain Economic Development Corporation, which is the regional development corporation that serves uh, the Randolph region. This project uh, originally um, is for the renovation of 1538 Route 66. So the property, the former Enterprise Center, the lower property, the upper property is housing uh, Upper Valley Services right now. Um, as you may remember, uh, as a, a project in its totality, both floors um, was approved, permitted, and went to estimate for the construction estimate. And in January, that construction estimate came back almost $4 million over the $4 million budget that we had to build the facility. So for the last 10 months now, we have been doing some value engineering to try and cut down that gap. We got the gap between the funding we had and the funding we needed down to about two and a half million. Uh, and as a further measure, we are focusing now on the upper level, finishing the upper level for occupancy in October, or July for staff and August, September for students of 2025. As a part of the funding required um, to fill the gap to allow us to proceed on the upper level, we have applied for a VCDP grant. As a part of that process, as many of you may know, Generally, that's a municipality that puts the grant application together. Um, municipalities can only have one grant per funding cycle. And uh, Randolph already had a funding grant in the cycle for this fall for, I may be mistaken, an RACDC housing project. I don't think it's Salisbury Square. I think it's one of the other projects. The Heading Church. OK, yes. In any case, uh, what we did in that situation was we went back to the other entities in the region that have supported this project and uh, approached Braintree about the op option of having Braintree submit the application on behalf of the project as part of the child care reg service region that we've been looking at. So they agreed to do that. The, the application has been submitted. It is not and this is getting a little bit into the grass weeds, but I wanna share this. It is not what they consider a consortium agreement formally. However, as a part of accepting uh, this approach, uh, the VCDP program office requested that we meet with a number of regional select boards so that the communities at large are aware that this child care center will be opening um, we're still, we haven't gone to bid yet. So right now we're crossing fingers, will be opening um, in the fall of 2025. Randolph is the final meeting that we've undertaken for this purpose. Uh, we've met with Royalton, Tunbridge, Sharon. Royalton, Tunbridge, Sharon. Braintree, obviously. I think there's another one in there, but I'm losing it. So <laughs> it's really, 
Strangely, you have uh, Randolph has supported us with ARPA funding. Braintree has supported us with ARPA funding. This is me coming to you to just tell you about it. I'm not actually asking for anything. So um, I can answer questions if people have questions about the project, uh, give you more of an update if that's desired, or we can just leave it at uh, fingers crossed going to bid in the next month. And hopefully you'll soon see a site sign going up on Route 66 saying that construction is underway. like it'd be cheaper to have demolished the building to build new than <laughs> yes. um, yes. I don't know if this makes us feel better or worse just from a general perspective, but this is just one of the projects in the state that has had this exact same challenge. Uh, construction projects across the state pretty much saw 75 to 80% construction increases um, over the course of the last year. So it was a surprise. We were unfortunately at the leading edge so nobody knew it was coming. Uh, all of the others have gotten the same news since then. The market, we are t told, um, HP Cummings is the contract uh, construction manager on this project. Uh, they are the ones that brought you the hotel on the hill. And uh, in we're in coordination with them weekly, daily, as needed. And they've told us that the market has stabilized. Of course, there is always a chance for a surprise. But that was good news to me that uh, they're seeing some softening, but generally um, the market's more stable than when we went to, to estimate before. Any questions? Good luck, Erica. <laughs> Great. You will know about it when we when we and when anything happens. So <laughs> It's not going to be a groundbreaking. It's going to be a, a, a wall breaking. I'm going to be handing out sledgehammers. <laughs> <laughs> you sure have a quick to work type situation, huh? Yes. <laughs> All right. Sounds like it's not to be missed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm frustrated. <laughs> It has been a long road and, and we have a bit of a road because I'm not asking you for anything now, but we're still going to have the lower level to complete after we had to focus on getting um, this underway or we were going to lose about three million of the funding we have in hand. We didn't want that to happen, so we had to figure out a way to, to proceed and that's where we are right now. Uh, next year, I may be coming to ask you something because we're going to be looking at the lower level with a much smaller price tag of around two, 2.5, so... Anything else? Um, I think that given Mark Rosalbo a, a one pager to provide to the select board, I don't know if that was put in your packet. Um, okay. That has our contact information on it, myself and the executive director of the child care center. So that's how we can be reached if there are any further questions. Great. Thanks, Thank Erica. You. Thank you. Thank you. Take care. Good presentation. All right, next up is consider a request to maintain Clover Hill Road. Thank you. Good evening. Could I speak from here? Sure. I'm Sam Samus. This is my wife, Jenny. He came to Randolph in December of 1971. And we, we purchased the Green Mountain Stock Farm, 1,300 acres. It was formerly the breeding farm for the Morgan horse. Lippet. Thank you. Lippet Morgan. Lippet Morgan. And uh, we uh, so hired a great land planner who took a look at the property and said, you know, uh, the existing zoning in the town permits half acre building sites. And you can have 2,600 home sites here if you want to subdivide it and get your approvals. But he said, you know, you've got a lot of open fields. You've got a lot of beautiful property here. And you're going to have to run roads and utilities to access the, all of the 1,300 acres. And he said, my recommendation is that you subdivide the property into small, much larger lots. And so we came up with a master plan that had 100 building sites versus 2,600. 
And one of the keys to this project was that we had a, a trail system that had been used by uh, Mr. Knight and, and his gang for taking four in hand throughout the property. And those trails had been let go, and we were able to find an old trail map, which we were able to, uh, for summer that we had the property, we got some local high school guys to come in and we, we opened the trails back up. So the trails became a very important part of the concept of the Green Mountain Stock Farm. So somebody buying a 10 acre, 20 acre building site through the trail system had access to 1,300 acres. One of the, one of the parts of the property was Clover Hill Road, which ran for one mile from where the Brunswick School is, up the spine of the property to the top. From Stock Farm to Fisher. Yeah, thank you. And that pro and that that road was maintained by the town. And we sold lots off of that road, and people built houses knowing that the road was going to be maintained. Uh, as time has passed, and uh, the town has got gotten away from maintaining the road, and they changed the the requirements for them to do that. Uh, we've had a great relationship with the town for the 50 plus years that we've owned the Green Mountain Stock Farm and that the now a number of lot owners have owned, the pro have owned their lots. Um, we, for 40 plus years, the uh, Fourth of July fireworks were held on the Stark Farm. Uh, the high school still uses the property for their cross country track team and for the cross country ski team. Uh, and we have we've tried to, and I think we have been we've been good neighbors in the town. Have been have been great to us also. Uh, we have a situation now, and I have a request that the bottom thousand lineal feet of the Clover Hill Road, so starting from Brunswick, running up past two driveways where there are houses, that we find some way together to maintain that road where the Greenmount Stock Farm and myself are not bearing 100% of the cost. And my proposal is that that road now needs some work. It, uh, the, uh, it needs some gravel brought in, it needs some grading, uh, the culverts need to be cleaned out and, and fixed up, but the road needs to be, be graded so that the water runs off to the sides and it becomes a safe road for an ambulance or for anybody to drive. So my proposal is that I spend the money to fix up the road now and bring it up to good shape in good shape. And from once that's done, that the town take on the responsibility going forward to maintain the road. So it was really that that, that that 1,100 feet, where they would they would now take on the responsibility to grade it, and you know to clean out the culverts and keep the road in good shape. I mean, you can imagine the was, uh, the town receives substantial monies from people paying real estate taxes, so there's income coming into the to the town that uh, certainly could you know help offset that cost. So uh, that's the proposal, and I hope that uh, it's well taken and we can, uh, it will be accepted. Thank you. So in that 1,000 feet, how many residents are there? Well, you have, you have the Brunswick School, mm -hmm. which, you know, where the old three-sided used to be. Yeah. 
and you have Brunswick School running up, and they've got they've got a lot of properties on the right and left hand side of Clover Hill Road running up the property. And then you have on the probably 900 feet up on the left are two house sites with houses on them. So there's two residents on there. Yes, and they've been there for some time, and they built their houses, you know, knowing that the town was going to maintain that road. And, and then Brun the Brunswick, Brunswick has a, uh, they, they turned the, the sugar, one of the sugar houses on the stock farm, they turned that into a uh, building that they have the students come and spend, sometimes they spend the night, other times they just go in there and they, they do different things in the building, for, which is great for the kids. <laughs> and sure. so they, they use that a lot and they have to, or the association is now replacing the bridge uh, getting from Clover Hill to the, the Sugar House um, so that they can have a the road. Nobody yeah. knows? We don't. What's, the what's your question? Who owns, Who owns it? it? It's, it's owned by the town. It's a trail. It was a it's class a trail. It was, it was both, a class four road. It was both a trail and a class four road. Doesn't didn't that used to get closed in the winter time? Made sense. It did. Yeah. It made sense to close it. <laughs> it does still up to the. And it still gets closed. I mean, we try to close it for safety. Yeah. I mean, some some you know, if you don't get that much snow, some people <laughs> drive it. Can I just, I'm sorry, um, I just want to make clear, it's all, not all of it gets closed. You, people can still drive up to the two residents oh, yeah. that are a thousand feet up. So oh, yeah. The upper portion is definitely closed off, but and it get, but it's being, right now it's plowed up past those the driveway to those two houses, and those uh, residents in those houses use that. But, and I don't know if the Brunswick School uses it in the winter. Do we know if the town owns that? Sure. So we're talking about from, correct me if I'm wrong, here's the parking lot off the Brunswick School. You're talking about this first yeah. thousand feet up to, it's like here's the driveway right here. Right, and then the on the right, cabin. on the right, you go from the Clover Hill Road to the um, Sugar House, crossing a stream. Over this side? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bottom yeah. of the screen? Yeah. 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 Okay. Maybe a little closer to stock for him, I think. Yeah. I should say also, I don't want to forget, you know, with, with the cooperative effort, back when we had a, a major rainstorm in the early 70s, the town was very helpful in, in enlisting FEMA's cooperation, and they got FEMA to uh, completely rebuild the bridge uh, on FEMA's, at FEMA's cost, and uh, they did, FEMA also did some work on the road. But the town was very helpful in working with us to get that done. Yeah, there's a really nice bridge up there now. It's a legal trail on our highway map from yeah. point to point, so from Fish Hill to Stock Farm. Yeah. What does a legal trail mean? It's a, one of the classifications. You guys were in earlier, we were talking about from class one, that was okay. that okay. one at the, at the end of the list there. Basically, the right of way is there, the land is there, and it can be used for people for recreation oh, yeah. at any time. But it's there's no maintenance responsibility. But there was right. originally when we bought right. the property. But when, if it's a trail, there's no legal responsibility for the town to do anything for maintenance. That's true now. Yeah, but but okay. when we bought it and sold lots off of it, it was a legal trail, but it was also a class four road which the town maintained. So it wasn't a legal trail then, it was a class four road. And a class four road, the town doesn't have to do much for maintenance either. But so, they did. And so and it was a lot choice. Of I'm just saying that you asked what a legal trail was. Okay. A legal trail is a right of way land access. You don't have any requirement to do any maintenance or anything on. It's there. So if a club wanted to come in and use it, the town could sign an agreement with a snowmobile club to run a trail up that road. Like there's that's, that's do it with the yeah. bike community. But what happens that's about the, the taxpayers who have built houses knowing that it was maintained by the town? I mean, I guess it's, you bought it on a legal trail, and that's the legal responsibility. What the town will do, I don't know, because we'll have to get into a discussion of what's really there, what's the no. condition, what's that going to require, 
kind of what does that look like and you know, we're not gonna have an answer for this tonight because no. there's a lot of information you gotta to gather for that but you know it's the legal requirement isn't there it's a matter of what does the to you know what happens from here what's that conversation look like and what what does it have to do so you're saying the legal so when we bought the property knowing that and the town maintained that the road that we should never have sold property on it because well you can sell property on it as part of your title search when you buy property it should have showed it was a legal well, trail right not yeah. a class one road it wasn't a class one no but it, when you do a title search part yeah. of that title search is telling you what what you're buying right so mm -hmm. the land records would have showed it's a legal trail so when you sold property to somebody as long as you didn't misre misrepresent that it was a class two or a class three road no it wasn't either it was a class four road did we change it to a trail when we did the ancient roads process yeah. it's possible i haven't gone back I think to that's look what happened. if there was a change or when that's yeah. and that's the hitch <laughs> the next well, but level that process came and went right so if people didn't want it to and even a class four we don't have to do anything with it it's okay. Okay. just a glorified trail okay. a class four is but um you know the the question now is you have a trail there and you have two residents there well and the and school probably. uses some of the does some of their activities on it is that going to meet a criteria by which the town would be willing to take over and, and reclassify that road up to a classification that then would put the town into doing the maintenance that's the question to me for just that 1,000 feet and some of that's going to have to look at like what's the right of way so when you get up in there i can see if that's the right of way what's on that map there's no place to the town wouldn't own a location to do a turnaround right so i can tell you already it's going to involve some real estate transactions and whatever because you can't we can't go up and then turn around on somebody else's property and then go back down we got in trouble on that already. So, so a turnaround is legally required if you put it if the town puts in a dead end road. Is that, is that well? Right? Otherwise, we're going to back all of our equipment we're, back we're, down to the stock. No, no, no. Road yeah. we're the turnaround that. would be like where it is now, before the bridge. You know what I mean? But it's probably not well, most within people, the right of way. Well, park. So you got to <laughs> clean that up. It's not a it's not a quick process, but right. Okay. It's it it's feasible. Maybe. Yeah. Depends who owns the land where the turnaround's got to be. If they no. say not playing, then it's not feasible. I think we can't take it. Could it could be feasible. So it's. Now, Brunswick owns goes the, goes the property on both sides of the road up there by the, by the bridge where people have been turning around for years. So mm -hmm. I would think it would be in Brunswick's interest to have the, the road in good shape and they probably would try. I don't know what they're going to do, but I would. I think the common sense would be that they would be cooperative in having a turnaround there. Any questions? Are, are any other are any of the representatives from the from these three properties from the school or the two homes? Are they here? Yeah. Okay. Danny. Yeah. The school is not here tonight. Uh, Danny, I thought I saw yeah, Kathleen Danny Harrington. She's school, yeah. right? Yeah. Comes with? And Danny D is also online right now. Not to speak for you, Kathleen, but if I remember right. So you might have Brunswick. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. We do have Brunswick. Can you hear? Yeah. Oh. Yes, Brun Brunswick is here. Yeah, Kathleen Harrington and Oliver Beerman Little are here. Uh, Danny Dishkowski. <laughs> we are now part of the uh, request here. That's, um, we're just listening as, um, you know, homeowners in the area, but we are not part of this request. Okay. Is there anything that anybody else wants Chiming to add to this? Well. Chiming in as well. Hi. Yep. Uh, this is Jeremy and Jeanette. We're also residents um, on those two properties. And, and also chiming in just to say that we're just here to listen. Uh, we're not part of this request as well. Thank you. You don't live on that road, do you, Andrea? No, but I just wanted to 
um, add to the conversation that, am I right or wrong, that if there's five private residents or five residents on a road that is not maintained by a community, that they could then, after five residents live there, they could make an appeal for maintenance on a road like that? There's only two. Point. Uh, okay. There's no magic number. Okay. No. Oh, okay. In the um, these two, there's just two houses. But it would appear that we've got we've got an interesting scenario here. But okay, we'll, we'll look into it like some more. That update to our roads policy. Yeah. Well, I think we require three in our policy: three residents, not three entities. So. Is that a town plan or is that? A, uh, this road adoption policy might come into play. Three residents in our Because the reclassification is clo very close in process functionally to what a brand new adoption would be. Who classifies the road? Is it the town or the state? You do. Okay, yeah. select board. Gotcha. Within reason, you can go and say you want Clover Hill to be a class one town highway. It has to also be a state road. Class two generally has some connectivity to other the towns. State gets or, to say on class yeah. one's <laughs> 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 Class three is the most flexible, localized category for decision making in terms of, and, and that's the bulk of our roads. Have any other history on this letter? No, but we'll have to dig a lot of stuff. Can you this close that process. road? Can you close the trail to, to during the summer to traffic? I mean, we close it in the winter, which makes sense, but. But you can't really close it to the winter either. If somebody wants to go up in there on well, skis or something they else, they can that's do it. A, I know. Yeah, because it's just a trail they can drive on. Yep, but they can. It's public. At their own risk. It's at their own risk. Yeah. I hope. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. Well, we'll have to do some digging. And <laughs> I appreciate that. That's an that. interesting word. See what that looks like. <laughs> Very interesting word you use. <clears throat> Yeah. Five percent of voters can petition, not five homeowners in statute. So that might be where the five comes in. Okay. Mm. All right. Well, thanks. We All like right. more challenges. Thank you. Wait, okay. we do? <laughs> <laughs> I said not really after that. So we're, 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 what's the next step? I don't know. Um, we'll have to sort through what we actually have for information, what we need for information. Okay. Kind of what all that looks like. Yeah, we're available. Okay. We owe you something back. That's the next step. Thanks. <laughs> okay. Great. All right, moving on. Introduction of Triland Plan Solar Array on Meadow Lane. Good evening, my name is Tom Gardner and I am Triland Partners. And I'm representing my company as well as the Pierce family which owns this 11 acre site on Meadow Lane. I'm not sure what I'm asking, and I always have an ask, but I guess I'm just thinking, if you'll just hear me out, maybe um, you can give me some guidance, which more than anything else will really help me. I put this land under contract to build a solar farm on a beautiful green portion of the property. Can you take that conversation out, please? So there's a, there's a problem with this property in that a portion of that 11 acres was formerly used as the town dump, and an extension of the existing town dump back in the 60s. And the Pierce family, older generations, had leased that acreage to the town because it was a gorge back then and it was fall filled in. It was the land between the end of Meadow Lane and the Pleasant View Cemetery. And it was just used as domestic town dump. Nothing nefarious, nothing presumably um, that would make it a super fun site, just town um, residents home. Thank you. Disposal. Thank you. So I started the process with the state, Brownfields Division, just to clean up the site. I did some initial testing on the Pierce property, um, applied for and was um, granted a designation in the Brella program, which means that I take title to this land, I would never have any obligation for the cost to clean it up. I was doing this because the state was being very, very um, optimistic that they would be able to provide all of the funding 
to clean up the portion of the site that was used as the town dump. Around December, after about six months of effort, someone made the, the claim that, well, if you're gonna clean up your portion of the dump, former dump, the town is gonna have to clean up on the other side of the property line. And that was kind of like, oh, wait, 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 I, I've never told the town anything about this. Why do they have to be involved? And it was people in, in, in state agencies saying, it only makes sense that if you, know, if you dig a hole right beside the property line and there's stuff that has to be cleaned up, then we, have, we should go on the other side of the property line. Um, that was a year ago, or that was about 10 months ago, and everything kind of came to a, 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 a stop. So I've been trying to figure out what happens next. We had been actually thinking at one point, let's clean up the peers' own property portion of the town dump. Let's work with the town to get the funding they need to clean up the town-owned portion of the old dump. Let's relocate the solar farm to the cleaned up old dump, and let's use the green field for 40 plus affordable housing units. Walking distance to Gifford Hospital, Shaw's and the other stores. It seemed like a good, a feel good project for that location. <clears throat> it gets more complicated from there. Well, who gets grant money? Is there still grant money? Will there be grant money in the future? There's a lot of unknowns. Who becomes the next president may affect whether there's any future grant money for anything like that. But there's money there, there are programs there, there's energy ready to be put forth towards this. But the easy, feel-good project is a community solar project on the green field. And let the old town dump land just stay like it's been for 50 years, untouched, unseen, not really thought about, except for a place to dump tires for the most part. There's a catch. I can't buy this land unless I test it and clean it. But if I do that, I'm not being a good citizen because the state's gonna make you clean the other side of the property line. So if I was a really good guy and a quitter, I'd just say, hey, here's family, I've gotta go. There's other sites that I'm busy working on. But I just wanted to come and just explain it and hope to get a little bit of guidance as to one idea I gave the Pierce family, which was to say, let's subdivide off the former town dump area that's on your 11 acres. Let's deed that to the town. Wait, why would the town want that? That's just more obligation, more liability. But technically it isn't. You're obligated anyways because you've used it as the dump. So you'll always have that obligation. You don't want someone unlike me who says, hey, I don't care, I'll do the testing. And if the town has to stop their testing too and spend that money, so be it. They've known about it for 50 years. I won't do that. It's not the way I work, not the way I want to work. You can't do that to a community who's, who's you know, working with you in good faith. So the idea again is, if the Pierces were willing to say, go ahead, subdivide the green field from the brown field, would the town take the deed to that four acres or so that has domestic dump material underneath it <coughs> that is adjacent to the uh, other part of the property that they now own. And by the way, this is all leaching into the Smith Brook, bringing discolored water downstream. But I've had one of the best environmental scientists in the state walk the site with me, and he, th he saw no evidence of anything nefarious. He said, that orange thing that looks up, that orange water, he says, it's leaching. Not a bad danger. He was more concerned about the pile of old tires on the town's portion of the property, because he said that's where mosquitoes breed. It's easy to say, okay, it's been there for 50 years, so leave it alone, let's not talk about it. And I agree, but I'm just saying, would the town consider, and maybe this is a Warren article, would the town consider taking that four or five acres from the Pierces so that they can move on? This is their last portion of land from their generation of farm ownership they, 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 they'd like to sell. And then would the town support 
my, my development of a community solar project on that site. So you said you, you didn't have an ask. That was two. <laughs> <laughs> So you said you did some <laughs> testing. Where did you do the testing? I did the testing only on the Pierce property, and it's called the Phase One Environmental Site yeah. Assessment. But where did you do the testing? Like where exactly on that property? Only where you want to put the solar, or did you do it? The entire, the entire 11 acres. And did you, and and you share that, that with us? Yes, you have. Trevor has a copy of that. But that Phase One is very. It's almost. It's more visible. There's no probes. There's no digging test pits. There's no trying to sample water or anything of that nature. So that would be the next step, the phase two, which, quite frankly, the Brownfield Division of the state would love me to do. Because the Brownfield Division is very motivated to clean up the hundreds of these type of what they call unlined, uncapped, unregulated brownfield sites. To my way of thinking, and I've said this, and I met with the planning board two weeks ago, um, there was one missing member. Sure. Just kidding, just kidding. And that's just that um, it, 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 is it easy for me to say, I understand, you don't want to go there, and I'll move on. But I just think it has merit that the Pierce family will be relieved from a, 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 I mean, they're still obligated as far as being in the chain of title, but they have some sort of relief from what's holding back their sale of this last property. I might also note that a year and about 10 years ago, they subdivided off an acre and a half, and there was an ophthalmologist's office built there. And that building's been for sale for years, and it's going to continue to be for sale because it has to be disclosed, the proximity to the full dump, and that's what the building owner has said to me is creating problems. Again, I don't think, and I don't blame the town, given you know, the complexities of funding to pay for the cleanup, to pay for the studies and things of that nature, for saying, let's just, we've got bigger, we've got bigger problems to take care of, let's focus on those, and wait another 10 years, 20 years, 100 years. But it just seems like it'd be worthwhile for them even just to protect the town, to take title to that other four acres that was part of the town dump, so that nobody else comes in and says, hey, I'm gonna test it, and, and put the town at risk. So in your presentation, you said you had talked with somebody at the state about funding to clean this up? A lot of people. And they would give you funding but as long as you do the other side, so why wouldn't we subdivide ours off and sell it to you? And then you could have the whole project of cleaning it up. Um, I'd rather not own that much brownfield, to tell you the truth. Just the, I mean, it could go both ways, right? You could own it all and, and clean up both sides of the property line. But, but, you know, I could, I'd be doing you a favor because I'd have umbrella protection and I'd have no liability. But it'd be just as, I mean, I could, we could do that. We could enter into an agreement for me to do that. You could enter an agreement for me to do that. I mean, it can go both. Yeah, absolutely. There's could. no reason it has to come yeah. on the town. It could go on. You're right. I mean, I don't believe it's land that we use for anything. Right? If you could clean that up and you could turn all that into housing. I wouldn't. Well, you couldn't turn all of it into housing. All you do with the former dump area, which is. That, yeah, that line right there. Thank Basically you. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I tried to sh screen share the other stuff and kept kicking us out. So yeah. The map seems to work, so we'll go with it. You couldn't put how you wouldn't want to put housing there because it'd be it's it would be stigmatized. But that's why the idea of a twenty or twenty five year solar farm on that portion mm -hmm. is is an ideal reuse of of um put the housing property. at the other end. Put I just saw your in. map, it looked like the house the Solar was at that bottom part. It is. It is for now because yeah. I moved it. I moved it back down into the green field. Yeah. I did. But you could a, take the whole there. thing, clean it up, move your solar up there, and put housing in the bottom. That's possible. Mm -hmm. You want to make a deal? I, 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 I'd entertain I know that. I know you asked for ideas. I was just throwing an idea no, at you. I'd entertain <laughs> that idea, but you'd have to subdivide your yeah. property because this is all part of the Pleasant View Cemetery parcel. We might have the staff that can handle a subdivision permit. 
don't think that would be hard to do. It's a, it's, it's dramatically different site. Because the, the cemetery is probably 15 feet higher in elevation. Yeah, it's almost a natural. Tell that's a bank. Almost yeah. a natural subdivision. Mm -hmm. Yeah, very high bank. I would say that you toss that around, think about it. What would that look like? Not a bad idea. I can't believe I'm saying that. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you call more brown fields. It's a lot less of a burden to the town than having more brown fields. Less of a brown fields. Mm -hmm. It seems If you're just prepping that land and cleaning it for solar, we learned when we did the other solar on that the dump, they could put it right on the lining without causing a problem. But I would think it's less. Whatever that cleanup looks like, and that the state's willing to participate in it to get it prepped for solar has got to be different than for other uses. It, it's it's like a, it's playgrounds it. and whatnot are the highest rate right, for cleanup level. When it comes down to residential and yeah, residential is like the least. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't know. Pick I'll, that I'll, around. I'll, I'll add one more thing okay. is that um, Representative over here was very hard last session on House Bill 289, which has a provision that um, net meter solar adjacent to affordable housing um, is automatically permitted or an allowed use and encouraged use. For one year. For what? For one year. For one year what? For one year, it's a, temp it's a temporary provision. Oh, and then that changes? It's a chop chop. <laughs> it's already been over a year. I'm just, just saying. I'm it's, it's not from when the governor signs it? Um, I have to go back and look at the statute. That would have been like May or June. Exactly. But I, my, if I recall, it's one year. It's probably one year from July 1 when the law. So he's got a few months. months. Well, no, you know what? I have, I have to have that law modified anyways. I, it, it needs a little. It needs a, it needs a little tweaking. And the the sense is that 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 law will be modified in the future, probably in this next session. But it's it's still not law, so there's no guarantees what's going to happen. With and, that. and what I tried to get into that law, by the way, was that that provision would have been for affordable housing, but it ended up being low income housing. That's the only way it applies. And my concept is to build affordable housing on that site because I, I'm looking at, um, you know, people who, who work in state government, school teachers who can't take a job at the school because they can't find housing that they can afford in or near the community. And that's what's really dire, in dire need. And that's what I think that site lays out perfect for. I'd go back and look at it. What happens if we subdivided the other one and put it on the and you have it, what does that green field clean up look like then? Or, you know, what is that brown to green field? I'll do like? it. And if I do it on one side of the line, I'll do it on the other. I want you I to have all of it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'll just complicate it one more bit. There's a separate parcel that I think is called Smith Brook parcel to the north of that. So it just follows the brook. It's kind of a thin, yeah, right down all in there. And that's a little trickier because if you stand on the banks of the Smith Brook, there's some things sticking out of the ground that are not so great. And I don't know if that, I don't know how that's there, but um, it's outside the Pierce property, it's outside the um, adjacent property into that north area. And I'm not sure how we get around that. It's not a tag with an owner, Trevor? When I just said shape polygon, that's when it's not a tag with an owner. Yeah. <laughs> that's no that's only complication, but state owns it. We can, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, I, 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 <laughs> I'm going back to the same way. Hey, you should take this property. Polygon means DEC, yeah. Um, but you see, with our to the cemetery, it lists us as the owners. Yeah. Suggest that it's not us. Any suggested next steps? I mean, I could put some plan. Um, I think you got to go back and look at that. What does that mean? Right, what, what does it mean if you end up with that area and there's, you know, what's the, what does that do to your project and what is the, yeah, what yeah, yeah. the cleanup look like? What does the yeah. construction look like? Okay. 
I don't think it's land that the town has any use for. I think it just sits there, so we can put it into use for solar and put housing on the bottom. Right? Yeah, I mean, I would certainly entertain the proposal that would do this. I have to see the details, but on, on, just on, on its face, it doesn't sound like a bad idea. Otherwise, we're just going to have that B of land that's just going to sit there. Yeah, it's of no use to anybody. We can make a use of it. That was the only thing. Okay. Thank you for your time. I appreciate it. We love giving other people stuff to do once in a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm up to board myself. It's always nice to pass it on. All right. UTV agreement amendment in addition. Run it back because you've already acted on it. But what we got back was a request from the village fire folks to papers are all jumbled here. To add a section about essentially reversion, so that once we get through the expiration of the Challenge term, that it would go back to the nonprofit. Uh, and then Mike followed up with whether or not you'd be interested in adding language that it more expressly calls out that um, it would be for their use only. It's sort of implied in the agreement. I don't see where we have a use for it, but it does seem odd that we would own something, insure it, potentially provide the means to transport it, and then not ever be able to use it for something. So I don't know, it's not a hill to die on, it's just something to point out. But those are the two pieces. The only one that's captured in here, though, was about the reversion at the end of the term. Again, I don't, this is not a piece of equipment that's been on our radar or is likely to be. I can't see why we, it all depends on how you feel. We'll have paid for it, insured it, paid for maintenance, all of those things. But I don't know what we're going to do with it. And they raised the funds to purchase it, so it's not like they didn't put anything into it. What's, what's the impetus for having it go back to the... What? Why? Why? Do we know why they want that next time? I suspect this is about customer relations internally, more than practical implications. But I don't. I don't know that. I haven't. Okay. I don't have what was relayed to me. Nobody's here to talk about this. No. No. But didn't we have a conversation with them about, like, if other people went through the training? they would be able to yeah. use it for other things too. It was in the earlier drafts up until we did this one that we've called the simplified version where it took out some of the details on those types of things, which ironically, I guess, called out more specifically whose primary use it was and you had to qualify to be able to use it if you were in any of the departments. I mean, we would want any town employee to be trained <coughs> on how to use it. Right. Hey guys, could you take that somewhere else? Thanks. Um, but it's, I mean, I don't think we want to agree to that. I mean, you get a big flood. Yeah. If they're off somewhere else and you need it, you may want somebody from the highway using it to evacuate from our stuff. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I was trying to let you duck. <laughs> Said someone else on the town. <laughs> You're going to have your amphibious vehicle by then, won't you, though? <laughs> Tank. <laughs> your salt wagon. Have we set a useful life on this? Not, there's not a term like spelled out. And I don't, the UTV is not a piece of equipment I've ever tried to incorporate. I'm not sure if it's five years, seven, ten. Based on expected usage for training and a minimal yeah, number of point. calls, it mm, theoretically could last for a while. Yeah, it could be around for a long time. I guess I don't have a problem with the reversion part, but I have a problem with the exclusive use part. Does that also require, like, if they're just kind of saying, well, we only we can use it, could a member from, like, say, the Center Fire or East Randall Fire come use it, or is it just strictly? Well, so the conversation was anybody who had gone through the training. All right, so they're planning to put a water tank in the back of this, which is going to change your center of gravity. Yeah. And so you don't want just somebody jumping in and heading on a slope, especially if they're going sideways. Right. You know? up it and then cross over type like they need all that training but the conversation was around any of the fire all the fire departments having an option to participate in the training and 
being able to use it. They had talked something about, I think that's when we got into that whole, it's going to have to be moved for them to use it. Well, you know, it's going to have to be moved for the village department to use it too. So, mm -hmm. and that doesn't change. And so, yeah. I mean, I would imagine there will be a training class put on and we'll have members of all three fire departments, the highway department and the PD participating in it and that will be your list of authorized users. That's the way I would see it. And Trevor. <laughs> <laughs> Juice for life just went down. <laughs> But at the end of it, if they, if it reverts, I guess I'm not opposed to it. But although, where does that put you if you're, wasn't it, there was that whole conversation about um, if it's decided it's a needed item, then, you know, the town could choose to replace it. If we chose to replace it, we would want that one for trade-in value. Yeah. So it's more of a, it, it's not, I don't think it's as easy as at the end of the useful life it reverts. It's, if we're going to discontinue having it as part of the assets of the fire department, maybe then it reverts. And that might be the it, way to write that in. Is it, is it at the end of the useful life or is it the end of the agreement? Well, the agreement is timed so that when it comes out of service, same. That's essentially same, the end of the agreement. Same yeah. term. So how is how do we determine that time on time then? Do we like how how is it determined when when that's the case? Well that's what I asked if we set a time, but I mean it's two there's two ways it, the time can be set, right? You can put a ten year or twenty year useful life on it, whatever you put on it, or it can be until the agreement goes until the asset is either like, not functioning, yeah, until it's a rust, and trees growing in the backyard. But <laughs> I don't know. Does it, does, this, does this have to pass state inspection? Vehicle inspection? No. No. In the earlier versions we had that you had to you can't drive it on the road. Get licensure and do some of those other things that are offered. That, but yeah, you can't drive it over the road. And I'm still not sure how it gets moved from place to place. Well, they bought another tra a trailer for it, but they don't have a vehicle to move it. So they did offer to buy a truck, a chief's truck, to move it. It's becoming a snowball here. Because mm -hmm. we need a chief's pickup. Well, yeah, and that's. They don't, you know, it's still to be determined what all the little, like, well, the more, the more urgent things to resolve yeah. are all to be determined, but, yeah. like, what happens to it at the end of its life in the fire department is, is where we're focused. Is there anything related to how long it can be insured with the life? No, you can, I have a 2009 still going, that baby's still insured. <laughs> 1987 bulldozer that's still in shape. I have a 22 year old car that runs great. It's all night, maintain them. What you do with them? I, mean, I think, ideally, in a lot of ways, the language is spelled out more concretely how discontinuation of service is determined whether or not it's used to trade in if there's a choice to okay. continue the use and then it feels like there should be something in there saying that when it comes out of service it comes out of the facility and it goes wherever it goes but it's not on site and so that that also would the temptation to deploy it or use it and or because this could be you know, 10 years from now, who knows? Anybody who's creating an agreement could be you know, doing other stuff. <laughs> I won't be here in but that's what you're looking for. Me either. The training has to be here. <laughs> <laughs> Do the only one left. 
so scary when you're like, oh, that nice carpet, original project. <laughs> there's a lot of bigger issues to resolve with this to get it into service but I don't care if it goes back to them as long as the town isn't if the town chooses not to replace it and keep it in the in the list of assets because it's not really fleet I don't know what you call it in their equipment yeah then then I think we can go back to them but if we're going to replace it then no it remains with the town and we get the residual value I'm still struggling with the whole, what the point is of giving it back. I just don't really understand what, why that is important, especially since we're talking about something which is probably at least 10, if not 20 years from now. It just seems, yeah, just, I, just, I just have the email communication which doesn't talking about. That's, I, just don't, I just, I would love to know what, what's motivating this, because without, some significant motivation. Yeah. It's like, why aren't we talking about the other things? Yeah, because they're harder issues to resolve. <laughs> well, this one doesn't sound easy. <laughs> well, the rest of it's in their court. And yeah, I, I think they thought it was an easy one, but I, there's probably some fear there that is the town going to make the decision that it doesn't need to belong, doesn't belong in the list of assets and we sell it. Money. Yeah, I don't know. Well, net all the money we have to put into it in the meantime. But and we don't get a cut of anything that's prepared and or sold out of the fire station, which is everything from raffle tickets to meals. So if we're going to start divvying up who pays yeah. for what, who provides what, then yeah. some kind of rental commission lease fee would be in order for. I think we have an issue there. But that's an audit issue. Can we try to rework it to get some of these things in here and get greater clarity as to the why? Sure. Okay. No decision in that one. 26 budget goals and priorities. We had this on in September, and one of the ideas was to wait and see after tax bills went out and people came in to get some flavor of where everybody was in the community through that process. Um, and so they've been out for, oh, ten, for about a month, um, sort of on schedule. And as I noted to you, the responses have been, people have noted the increases, but they've generally been anywhere from diplomatic to, to resigned, if that makes sense. There hasn't been a lot of sort of forceful um, issues expressed. But, and so it's been this odd kind of muted set of feedback. People are just sort of like, it sucks, but it is what it is. There's a bubble in real estate listings. Yeah. And so I don't know there's a lot of guidance in that. Um, we've had initial conversations. It's about you know, sort of practice financial mindfulness. Um, you know, when you put together budgets, think about you know, we need, and as we start to frame things out and we put in expected insurance costs, um, salary increases, um, retirement costs to go with that. You kind of see what the footprint is after that. And we almost build it like you used to build a newspaper where you put in all the advertising and what's left is the news hole, they would call it. And then that's the space you have to fill with the content. And so for us, because so much of it's personnel and our debt service, that's the sp spots we plug in first. And you kind of see what's left for some of the other stuff and, and base it on some of the costs. Some of the things to be mindful for when we budget are the things that we don't necessarily control on the front end. So we've had some large increases in ambulance expenses um, for that. That was actually kind of a big stressor that we talk about a lot in the general fund last year. It was about $30,000 or something, 20, 30,000 bucks. Um, so just as other requests kind of come in. But really it's if you want a signal. So you don't have to, it's not something that we've done historically here, I've done it in other places. Sometimes it helps frame up the guardrails that we use so that you don't get something that you're automatically like, what the, 
heck, and then we don't try to go through different permutations of budgets and what they mean and what they cost in January, right, as we're racing that deadline to set the town meeting warning. So to the extent we can build them on the front end, you know, build with them in mind, that's a little bit easier. But you could just tell us to be thoughtful and we'll go with that, too. I mean. Did you get any sense from the superintendent on what they're looking at? Not in numbers. I'd say the takeaway sense is that they are looking at all sort of operational categories, parameters, with an eye towards other things we have to do, do differently, do well. Um, so that they're, I think they're doing that kind of review um, with an eye toward that sort of fear of impact. I don't know if fear of impacts the right way. I mean, we've talked a lot about it. Another double-digit increase in school costs would be less than ideal, so. You look at the bill, they're the major driver there. And we can't keep trying to just level fund everything and think, you know, that we're helping because our the, t the municipal portion of the tax is, is pretty low compared to the school, and that doesn't mean you like, go out and match them. But at the same time, we're not, we're not growing some of the areas that we need to to keep up. Like, and I, you know, I, I understand the, some of the pressures that are out there, but I mean, I'm also cognizant that when you hire an employee, that's a big jump in, in the cost of, you know, what's out there. But I honestly think we need to take a step backwards and look at, like, this is the service model that we have given as a town is this really the service model we want and if it is then we're going to have to staff it and fund it otherwise we're going to have to start looking at you know, what where do we go or do we want to add certain things or do we want to subtract things it's hard for us to keep giving you budget direction and say you know only raise it three percent we haven't ever we need to take that step back and say is this really what we want to be doing and if it is, then we got to say, what's the right way to staff this? And what's the right way to implement these programs and fund them and to move forward? And, you know, I'm going to come back on it again, but I think we need to do a select board retreat. And I think we really need to, to think about a lot of these things in an environment where we can kind of have this throw, I'm sorry, but throw shit at the wall and see what sticks kind of thing to say this is where we got to go and this is what we got to do like we haven't had the I think we were working on one and it got canceled with COVID and we haven't gotten back to it but you know we're band-aiding stuff together right now in some areas and it's just it's not working and we can't sustain it because some of these employees are just at wit's end how's oh, Scott <laughs> we but, like we want to we want to go after energy grants and do building improvements and whatnot but we don't have anybody that can focus on that because that person's also doing planning commission work and doing all these other things and we go and get these grants and then we don't have anybody in the finance section that can oversee them so Trevor ends up overseeing them while we're trying to get Trevor to go chase something over here and it's like there's just, there's no rhythm there. There's no, it's not defined. It's not, we haven't had that focused, good process of thinking through workflow and what we really want to do and where we really want to be. It may end up that we've got to add position or a couple positions or whatever to get where we need to be. But I really think we got to take that and step back and really kind of give a better framework because you can't you can sit here and say add five percent and it's like well okay and whoops i gotta eat up my benefits and whatever so we really haven't solved the problem we've taken whatever percentage we can give everything's reasonable and we've just thrown it at well you don't have to have any cuts but you are cutting because mm -hmm. in the end you're we don't have we're not set up well with it and we're, we're just playing catch up all the time and that's just not a good place for anybody and I, I just feel like we've got a better way we could come at this I 
actually was sitting in my cabin the other night with a pad of paper, and I started sketching some of it out. <laughs> then I had to put it down. <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I feel like we're not being fair to you. Because if we say to you, oh, here's this disaster, we know it's out there, and it's going to implode eventually, but here's 5% more to add to the budget. See what you can do with that. We haven't given you anything. We haven't helped make those policy decisions or set direction or whatever. Do we, have time, do we have time to do that before budgeting needs to happen? I got time Saturday. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> when, when do you want to meet on Saturday? <laughs> I got all Saturday. Well, I could have all Saturday. I no, I think it's a great idea. It, I, think, I think getting together and spending some time just mash, mashing out some of these thoughts and ideas. Well, and where do we want to go? What do we, what do we want to do? What are the priorities? What are, yeah. the, what are those pieces? Like, what does that look like? Yeah, I would be more than willing to set a date. Well, I think if we're between now and mid-November and a little later than sort of that Thanksgiving break, there there'd still be some assembly that happens as part of the natural course of events, but we know for we know on the existing employees mm -hmm. what the expense of them are going to be. You know, maybe they're not in the same job that they're in today. We've got to move them around a little bit, but that depends on what happens. But some of the basics you would know, but mm -hmm. I just. I don't know. It's been bugging me. I didn't tell. I took a pad of paper. To <laughs> it's gonna tell you something. <laughs> All right. So we want to set that date. Can we do it now? Or should we wait? to be on the weekend or on the night or what do you think? Either I works for me. I would think that you could hash most of this out in a couple hours, don't you? Like if you set aside, say, three hours, maybe four. You have, give yourself plenty of window. We can always do two if we need it. Yeah. The first one's fun enough. It'll be fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, for, for looking at maybe a two to three hours time period, I would suggest that we do it in the evening during the week. Okay. Not, not ruin anybody's Saturday or Sunday. Enhance, you So what days? <laughs> what days are? are it's, 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 hard <laughs> it's just. I have nine, ten hour days at work, and so I just won't get the best of my brain. Mm -hmm. We could do a Saturday evening. Those things. But I, I mean, I'm willing to do it on a weekday. I just, I'm certain with other committee board, it's just a lot. Yeah, no, I hear you. I'm flexible. That was just a, a suggestion. What about Saturday, November 2nd? And you pull that up and it's the Day of the Dead. Perfect. <laughs> 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 I'm going to have a theme. Great. I don't know. <laughs> Can't make this right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You want to just do it on Halloween then? Or are we? Mm. <laughs> um, I'm fine with that day. I just thought it was funny that it came up. What is the sports? You'll be done. You'll be done. Yeah. You'll be done. It never ends. I get like two weeks, I think, off. But wrestling has already begun, so I really don't have time. Yeah. Should be good. Sunday's already mini metro basketball at that point. <laughs> Saturday should be okay. So November 2nd, and we'll figure something out.
What time are we doing this? Morning would be better because I do have soccer practice to come to. Eight o'clock. Is that too early? <laughs> How about nine? Can we do nine? <laughs> it's a little early. <laughs> I'll say it. Nine sounds good to me. This is nine. Nine. So we'll set up for November second. Middle of the day then. Nine to nine to noon basically. <laughs> nine to noon. Okay. Are we going to do this? Thank you. Sure. Thanks, Mark. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> That's an was, afternoon. Was like, well, we're bored of, bored of abatement. What was that? Uh, the bar. Oh, the bar. Yeah, we're yeah, bored of abatement and so already. By the time we get to the end of the meeting, though, we might be more. <laughs> Save the good stuff for last forever. That's when we get the armored uh, aquatic vehicle there. <laughs> All right, uh, then we have a couple of continuation items. Discussion of the town charter. I owe you a product. I just, this is a time and space product, just as we were sort of talking about that. It's just sitting down and drafting it. Came back from Pittsburgh with big ideas to use all kinds of other technology tools. And reality's a lot Someday. grittier, yeah. Someday. Mm -hmm. That's what happens with those. Uh, Took 20 minutes to come back to Earth, so. <laughs> Short lived. Uh, consider ARPA funds continuation. So, this is back up. We had talked through a bunch of it. I didn't even remember in the summer, I think it was. Um, part of why this is back is that there are some clarifications in the Treasury guidelines related to obligation. Um, the way they read when you read them, sort of from the most plain direction, is that. The best way to obligate is really to expand or to be as close to it as you can be. So um, purchase orders, invoices, having already paid for the thing, a contract for an outside service provider. So I even asked, could we say for our grants management need, if we set it up as a contract employee with a term and set the money aside, then there's a sense that that wouldn't meet the obligation deadlines. Um, so the idea to hire that extra capacity with some of this funds over a couple of years doesn't work because we wouldn't be able to parlay the money if you don't do anything, we wouldn't be able to extend it beyond December 31st. There's another option you have to get you through the end of the fiscal year, which is to essentially declare any unobligated funds as surplus. We'd use them for general fund payroll expenses, for example. And then you take the surplus and redirect it. The challenge with that for FY25 is that there was a question put before the voters that already says where surplus is going to go. Um, so I'm not quite sure. I think. We do that if it's we're getting closer to December 31st, and there's a risk that there might be some money that we'd have to return, but and then sort out some of the details after that. Um, so there is also that option for the unused funds. So at one point we were holding some funds aside for some of the disaster relief, disaster mitigation needs that we have. That was a little more than 400,000, and then we're talking about a couple of years of a staffer. I think we're in the $200,000 range for that. So there's $600,000 we were going to send one direction. Um, that we'll have to deploy in another one. I did put together a quick list. I went back and looked through a town list and an earlier committee list and tried to pick through what's still viable, what's still live. There's a surprising, or maybe not surprising number of things that are already off on different paths. The EV chargers, for example, were in both of those lists in some format and have different sort of pathways to them. Um, and these are just things that we know are out there or have come up. Um, so I've got a paper copy. I'll try to pull it up on the screen, too, and I apologize. For, I don't know what the screen share issue is here. Um, but we also have some items on order, right, that are coming. That's yep, and they're sort of considered there. So what I, what I did is there's sort of the everything that you spent to date are obligated. And then there's sort of the next list, which has some stuff we've talked about before and or um, ask them. And then there's some stuff just at the bottom that I, we've talked about before by and large. We've got other plans for that I've thrown in. And then there's still the ability to pull anything off of any of the shelves because we haven't obligated um, those funds. So let me see if I can get that list to come up. And I've focused on goods and services in large part because it does seem like the cleanest way to meet the obligation standard. Um, because it's pretty easy to produce a purchase order, an invoice, a contract, um, those types of things. Let me see if I can screen share it too here. Yeah. Totally 
not. Okay. I don't know why it's not showing. This machine doesn't have the Adobe on it. I'm talking like a really old person, like the Adobe. And it shut off the Microsoft Edge. Let me see if I can try it again. It might just be for folks in the room, and I apologize here. This might be the oldest PC in the building, in case anyone's wondering about the age of our equipment. Is that on the list? It is not. Mm. At one point, we did have meeting room Smart. upgrades on a prior list that would have paired stuff up. So that is an idea. Um, so just top to bottom, total award up here at 1.37. Um, the stuff that you've already obligated, you'd set aside $200,000 for a police startup. They spent 168. dollars They didn't buy the shredder they wanted and then complained about it the other day. I want to note that for the record. Um, and then the second category, the things we've talked about before, um, in some form and or are already loaded. Um, with the exception of the loader, this is more of an emergent issue um, in terms of the We've been working through our backlog of relatively antiquated equipment. The loaders have been highlighted for a while as a soft spot. Um, the reason this one has some urgency to it is that winter's coming. This is how we load salt sand and uh, remove snow from downtown areas. If we don't have a loader in circulation, life's pretty complicated pretty fast. Um, so this is, we have been looking at other options, um, at least to own some of those things to bring to you. So it's in the list just to show you the cost there is after the trade-in of our existing Loader. We've talked about cruisers before. These are two, the price for two fully outfitted ones. And then website replacement's been on lists forever, been the project we've probably talked about the most in a lot of ways. That's the cost of after we've gone out through all the different solicitations over the years. Um, permitting software, the idea with that would be that it would pair in with that and you'd be able to, from home in another pandemic, go through a permitting process and we could issue, track, do all of those things, add code compliance at some point. So it provides just another portal. Uh, and we've been picking away at the economic development video. That's the, the unfunded amount. I don't know if you've seen or heard from Mark and a gentleman named Art who's been around as part of a, a marketing mm -hmm. effort. Um, and then the possible additions down below are some other things we've talked about. The dump truck, the 10-wheeler in this case is what's in the list. We also ordered a six-wheeler. We did these after we had some issues ranging from accidents and totaling to um, just being unable to put them in service. They're not coming until next spring because of the lead time. We had thought about reserves, and if not reserves, lease finance. So I just put one out there as an example of things we've already committed to with different plans that you could um, reallocate resources for. Um, digital signature platform on line 17 is one that was in earlier lists so that way. It's been nice to see whichever, usually it's one of the two of you comes in and signs something, and I do look forward to that, but this you could do from home if you needed to. Um, we could sign documents, again, fits that original intent that if we had to shut the building down, we'd still be able to provide that. That's probably a little more than what was needed. The program we priced out that others used was 7,500 bucks, but it's been a couple of years since we've looked at it, so I put a little more in just for um, the city. The ClearGov budgeting transparency software, I've talked to you about that before. It would integrate all the different budgets, capital budgets, employee costs. We could plug things in, run forecasts, run um, different models, different versions. We're on a NIMRIC export spreadsheet model right now, and the potential for human error and or data error in between those platforms is uncomfortable um, as a margin. This would also have a public piece. We put a link on the website. People could go in and break these mm -hmm. things down. Mm -hmm. um, this is actually startup year one and most of year two. So that's a bigger number than it needs to be. Um, but it would get us into budget year 26 functionally. I mean, I have to put a little money as we and plan. What's like ongoing licensing? Yeah, yeah then there'd be an ongoing cost. And, and so this would provide us a little money to step our way into that, into 26 and beyond. Um, would the other, the permitting software and the digital signature platform software, is that also ongoing cost? It'll be ongoing cost, but not necessarily the full amount shown. So we'd have to figure out how to budget for some of those. So there is still some yeah. science just, there. Really yeah. love to know what those, what those costs really are. Because if we're committing ourselves to every, you know, annual in yep. increase in costs, it would help us figure out whether it's... Mm -hmm. 
or good value or not. It would also be interesting to know what that savings is, Trevor. Like, if we go to the the uh, budgeting transparency software, mm -hmm. what's the savings of staff time now that has to take that NEMRIC dump and then work it backwards into a spreadsheet and manipulate it for the budget things? If you mm -hmm. can do it at the press of a button, like maybe we're paying a couple thousand dollars a year maintenance fee mm -hmm. on it or licensing or whatever, but are we saving, you know? more than that in, in labor fees to do it like what's the the places who are using it have found that what's nice about it is that you can empower individual users to to put that in so we could set up a tab for amy and it would populate out of nemric all the prior years and then she could write in that module if she wanted do the library's budget you know we could do that sit down with john and do the highway budget that way um, the places we're using it have found it. Obviously, there's the learning curve in year one, time one, but they do find it easier. And so we'd still be using our financial data. It comes out of Nemric still. It goes in, populates as we're set up, um, and then you can run your models sort of from that and save different versions. Um, it's a more expensive tool than I'm usually comfortable with, but if we don't start to look at different tools, particularly technology tools, like. And right now you meet with each one of them, and then you have Try to, to yeah. enter that all into that spreadsheet. Ideally, that's what it would be, but we've been in more of a scramble and firefight mode um, in recent years, so we, we try, but some of the conversations might be less formal, might be on the run a little bit. Uh, John and I will meet in pieces, for example, um, as it evolves. Some of that may be that retreat discussion. Where does where does some of those duties belong, and like what is your what is the role of each of your department heads? Mm -hmm. What should they be doing, and if they're doing that function, so it's not falling on you, then what does that do to the you know the labor hours mm -hmm. allowed below them? And are we staffed right for that? Okay. So if I were to do a sort of a full process with the tools we have now, it would be to take budgets update numbers from last fiscal year end, you know, as budgeted, all of that, make budget worksheets for everybody so they could fill in the Excel templates. So that's making those a department at a time, and then there's still the ones that I'll have to fill out um, in between across all the funds. And we've got to input those later, and then you've got the different versions of the budget, and it's building out the personnel cost sheet and updating it for any of the transitions we have, changes in rate, we'll have union numbers to put in at some point when we look ahead to next year um, to the, the extent we can automate this. And what's nice about it is it's it doesn't rely on one person. Um, I just go off the deep end and jump on an airplane and go to Tahiti. And somebody can call up the service provider and get some training and pick it up from there. More easily than you could, not that the spreadsheets are so complicated, but it's a lot easier. So just some things to consider um, and put them out there. And then, like I said, you've got other projects you could do a blended approach where some of it's the resolution. Um, that's just a little trickier when we think about the question before voters. Um, town meeting is in between the process to obligate and then re-obligate, for example. I even asked about that. Um, has multiple steps. So it's designed to be complicated, and it is sort of rightfully so to sort of make your justification and make sure you've got all of the um, similar requirements to when you're originally obligated and go through it. So it's, I even thought about that, that we obligate at one place, place where we work on spending it in another before the deadline in 26, but. So some of these though, we should be looking at tonight, right? And moving forward. So like this website one <coughs> is one that we've been hot after for a while. The loader is a challenge, right, right now. And then we've got the two uh, cruisers, which if you've seen them in the parking lot, they should have been ordered a few months ago. Those to me look like the three that we probably ought to be considering tonight, right? Did we already are looking at money for the website? Been in the prior list, so I thought that we actually you may have skipped it. it. I thought we did too. It was 
There's fifty-five thousand dollars that we. We had it out for the website, and we were going to try to tack on some other functions. But the way the cost triggered off at the end of the day, you can get the two pieces for the one price, basically, you know, or a little less than the one price. So were those three items the fifty-five that we had before? You could consider them that way. I might group the three items as the 55 before as the digital signature platform, the permitting software, and the website. And then we still want to look at a different payment server model. We just have to do some costs and identify that. Something that talks more easily across platforms and enables more people to pay for more stuff in more ways. So there's possible there's another technology-based one that could be. So didn't I just hear that hardware actually is an issue too? I don't have what I need to even bring this on the screen. <laughs> Prefer to think of it as fostering creativity. <laughs> All right, that's the mindfulness change. So if we approved the um, website replacement loader, cruisers, the permitting software, the digital signature platform, and some money for hardware upgrades, what would that dollar value be? So what do you want? Talking. We had a larger number for hardware meeting room upgrades. So we'll put that back maybe around five. I love the fact that our Police chief is able to give us dollar values right down to 99 cents. Mm. He's the man. <laughs> so we are not giving you that extra penny. <laughs> <laughs> so if I read you a number that's in the million, it's because I didn't type it in right. Yeah, if it was 123, 620, we would have been like, uh huh. <laughs> Way too much. Gosh. Sold it. Right, hang on, I'm getting there. Right? Just I'm driving the struggle bus. Okay, all of those things would put you at three seventy seven, five ninety four, ninety nine. So this number plus 5,000 for the hardware? That includes the 5,000 for the hardware, yeah. Yeah, actually, yes, now I get your question, sorry. Again, struggle bus. Gotcha. <laughs> Over there. Yes. Yeah, we're just swapping the descriptions. We're taking the yeah. economic video out and putting the digital signal. Ah, I see, I see, I see. Yep, yeah, okay. Yep. Yeah. And then, um, and adding some money for hardware. Five thousand for her. So uh, the trucks are not due until when? We have until it's like March, April time frame before they're earliest to come in. What is April? Twenty-five. And this budgeting software that would be something you'd want to implement after we get through December, right? Yeah. All we need to do to meet the obligation standard by the 31st is sign essentially the, the agreement. And that's the one that um, we would just want to see what the ongoing maintenance fees and yep. whatever are. Can we get Mark to give us something about what this economic development video is in. We're putting some pretty big payments out there for that, and I don't know that I've ever yep. yeah, seen anything about what it actually is, or what it's looking like, or what the goals are of it. Because didn't we do that? Did that? Were you on the board when we did that one, and the guy came in and went around town videoing people? And it was like a... So it's a Terry Bradshaw one. Right? Something about America, right? Yeah. Town it's been about 15 years. towns of America or something. That wasn't too long ago, I don't think. We didn't, no. we didn't actually have to pay for that, did we? I thought that was... Um, I thought we ended up having to pay, it was like 4000 or $5,000 in the end on that. My memory of it is rather murky. 
they would do a, it was, it's almost like one of those gimmicks, you know, you come in and we'll take you to this point, but if you pay us 5,000, we'll give you this deluxe version kind of thing. It was, it ended up with some catch like that, if I remember in the end. You could hold on to the remaining 376, 253 basically for now if you want. And okay. we can develop some ideas for November too if you want to think about some stuff and learn about some ongoing costs. But that, I mean, yeah, we could use December meetings and special meetings and other stuff, but it would be nice to be a little farther from the, from the deadline. But if we get through this setting mm -hmm. stuff, we may figure there's some stuff there too. Yep. So it would be good to hold some and have the conversation about sort of what are our budget goals and what are we doing and yeah. whatnot. Yeah. Okay. What we might be able to do too, if you get to that spot, there's stuff you think you could do the resolution for some or all of what remains. And we just make sure we spend it in this fiscal year so we avoid that. Conversation. If you want it to go one place, and the general surplus funds are already sort of pointed in another direction, because the whole idea with that process is that you you just swap one for the other. It's a it's a shell game, but and that would only be for one year, though, right? Yeah, that all ends June thirtieth, so that's uh, the other weak spot with that one. We're a bit of an odd duck in that we're holding on to not only some ARPA funds, but a fairly sizable chunk. Yeah. I'm still nervous about the match on it. But, you know, why is that not eligible? We've spent it, right? Like, we know what our match portion is. Yeah. Right? Because they've said it. It's 90-10 for the July storm. So we know, and then we know the state's going to pay whatever their percentage is of that 10. Yeah. So we, can't, we know what that number is, and we've spent it. I'm saying that doesn't count? Well, we could consider, maybe the other way to tackle it is to say the money we spent of our own on certain replacements up to a dollar value, we say that's where we spent X number of ARPA funds. So then we free up that money to make the match that way, that same sort of swap. And then that's yeah. how we make the 25. And we avoid any issues with using ARPA funds for any of those commingled state, federal dollars, avoid those sort of pitfalls that are potential. So we could consider that too. Because um, that's, that's going to be a sizable amount by the time we get done, right? And, yeah. And that might be cleaner than the match or idea, frankly, the more that I sort of think about it. Because if we took the first bundle of projects, which is out for reimbursement, you add about a half a million, six hundred thousand. And that's all. We've been really fortunate we haven't had to borrow money. So that's all ours. So we know that. We don't have to worry about paying anything back. And that's the June, or is that all what we're doing? That would be, yeah, I mean, you could use the either June one, but June, yeah. But the December and whatever, some of that, they're one site they were putting back, but the other, some of that's 25% match. Yeah. And we as, did we have an estimate of what we thought our match? It, no, because it depends on what those three slopes on North Randolph Road cost and what the bridge costs. Those are the two big ones that are locked up for lack of engineering. But we thought it could be up at around 300 or so. Yeah. That's about what we're still sitting on. Mm -hmm. And we knew the trucks were potentially going to have to be financed. Yep. Which is our big item in there. Yep. Yeah, if we end up at 90. leaves us still sitting pretty good. Yeah. If we end up at 90, 10, we'll probably be in that 300. Unless for some reason that bridge is where the slopes are something different than we're thinking of. But you got a slope problem right there at it. Yeah. That one's gonna be a nightmare. We were able to get a stock farm done for a lot less. So that was part of that original number two, and then we thought that might be half a million dollars when we spent hundred and twenty-five. Yeah. Yes. But they're only mm -hmm. gonna pay for a portion. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 
But in the worst case, like we still are pretty close with what's left. If we agreed to obligate these funds and move these pieces forward, we're still sitting pretty good yeah. for match on the, on the floor. <clears throat> we need another pot like that to land. <laughs> Have some more. That's the central spot. Right. What do you want to do? Well, if we obligate all that and then use the rest for the FEMA rebuild, basically, is what you're saying. Then, if we do our retreat and find that we might want some money for any of that, we would be out of luck at that point, right? right. Maybe we hold the 376 under the premise of we'll use it for the match. You can have your thing on the second, and then you'll meet on the 14th, and then at that point you can. Oh, and we're still. You know, seven weeks away from the deadline or whatever it is. That's what I was thinking too. Gives us a chance to just kind of go through our retreat and. Mm -hmm. But um, is there anything on this list that we'd want to definitely push through tonight that we want to get ordered for the cruisers possibly? The loader and the cruisers are the two that I've heard are pretty urgent. Are we already kind of obligated the rest of it? We've obligated the fifty-five thousand already, which is the balance of that. Right. We're so. just breaking it out in a little better. Right. Our, I think if we get to the hundred and seventy something thousand sitting there, we're still sitting pretty good. You know, we're. Um, it'd be interesting to look at uh, the costs in the highway program now that we've got them. Like over this last year, and how we were able to use the, some of the town equipment and whatnot and get reimbursed from FEMA, mm -hmm. and we were able to use the um, grants to help pay for some of the work they did, like the work on Ferris Road, yeah. and I think they're doing some right now on Silway Road. Like, how does that impact the overall budget? Because I, I think what we're going to find is that the savings that we're able to make in that could either result in more work being done or could result in savings on you know, that might be able to with the same budget so if we went that way make the payment on the dump trucks or mm -hmm. whatnot you know, we bought that excavator and yeah that's, and that's uh, we've been able to bill for the excavator and the operators time to those grants where they were budgeted as as part of the uh, highway budget amount that got approved, so that that dollar value sort of savings look like. And, yeah. I think uh, something I'm interested in doing with the budget overall is having a better capital plan for some of this equipment. So if we do have some savings of starting to, because it's a lot of equipment all at once. And so if we didn't have the ARPA funds, what would we be doing right now? Our highway department would be not functional practically by the sounds of it. Yep. I think the positive is we've caught up, other than this loader, we've caught up on mm -hmm. all the old equipment that just sort of got, was functioning and not in a cycle. Yeah. But you're right, it's all at once. And some of it will last longer than others. I think a greater will last, should last quite a few years, but we got two of them, so you gotta keep that cycle in mind. I agree. About every 15 years, you'll be replacing a grader. Well, the one we did replace is 15 years old, though. So we have a 15 year old one and a brand new one. So that really puts so us every like 15 right years at years. You'll be. We should be buying a new grader next year to keep that. No, well. no, no, no. It'll last 30 years. 30 years. So it's 15 years old now. Ah, uh, I know. Okay, okay, replace okay. that one in 30 gotcha. years. You'll replace the new one. Gotcha. So I mean, every 15 years, you should be replacing the grader. But then you have to predict within 15 years how much is it going to cost mm -hmm. so they can save the money. <clears throat> yeah. Right. So are we comfortable moving forward with those first objects and saving the three 
376. Then go. Well, I may have you do in December, even though it doesn't seem required. The guys to just make a like some kind of final resolution or final <coughs> statement that says this is this is how we've obligated up before the deadline. And there's some sort of formal marker for us. And we handle it through the reporting, but it, um, it's just a huge amount of money that was given to us directly, and there isn't any precedent for it for us. So a little extra memorializing. I don't think we heard. Yeah. So, I had heard rumors that like they were caring as much about what the local church involved. It was like these are in the town's hands now. <laughs> so they're going to look into what we did with them, or they don't care? They're yeah. done, gone, and... I don't yeah. think they're going to bother with us, but... Good. <laughs> okay. But if anybody has to change the discussion. Yeah. <laughs> well, if that's the case, we should go back to our original plan. <laughs> yeah. If anybody has that luck, though, it's us. <laughs> yeah. So do you want a um, motion tonight that allows you to move forward with this? I think so, then I can attach minutes and all of that stuff. Okay. But we're moving the economic development video down a notch, and we're adding the digital uh, signature platform up. Yep. Okay. Eight plus 5,000 for hardware. Yes, yes. <laughs> Just preparing myself here. Um, <laughs> all right. Um, all right, so I'll make a motion to obligate ARPA funds for, do I need to say the dollar amounts or as listed? Sure. 377-59499. So moved. Do I need to list the things? <laughs> <laughs> for the items listed, and then I'll just put them in the motion if you guys want. Okay, website replacement, loader, cruisers, permitting software, and digital security yeah, platform, better. and hardware. Correct? Yeah. Just to be very clear. Mm -hmm. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Manager's report. I think I have anything beyond what you have written, so. Or what I have written. <coughs> C4 or something. Do we have an executive session? We do. We have a few things we want to take a tour through. So this is a two motion one. You've got both motions on the back. Just to sort of recap for everybody, we have contracts, collective bargaining, probable potential litigation, personnel and real estate that covers every potential permutation of those items. Can I say something right now? You can say with the finding that it's necessary and prudent and that premature general public knowledge would place the town at a disadvantage or a substantial disadvantage, depending on how you're feeling. So I'm going to All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Part two. No, that one you can just say. So moved. I can read them out if folks want. I second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor up. Everyone. Right. 